Hello. Hello. So I was reading my comments, as I always do. Oh, sorry. I'm Latasha McDowell, your real estate expert here in Tallahassee, Florida. How are you? Happy Tuesday. I think today is Tuesday. Days kind of get a little much together after a certain point. How are you? So I was reading my comments, as I always do. And a lot of you had the same question. And the question is, I need help with down payment assistance, right? Some people are saying, oh, I have good credit. And I just did a video on it. Hey, Patricia. And some people are like, oh, I need money. I need help with saving up for my down payment or for my closing cost. Well, 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 welcome to the party. There's something that's called down payment assistance that you can find out about if you Google down payment assistance plus your state. So, for example, I'm in Florida. Down payment assistance in Florida. It'll populate everything that's available. So, let's say you're in Michigan. Down payment assistance plus Michigan. Down payment assistance plus Ohio. Down payment assistance plus Hawaii. And everything that's available will pop up. You can read to discern what you're eligible for. Now... Closing costs, that might be a little more tricky. So as far as finding out what closing costs program that you may be eligible for, I mean, you could try to trick Googling closing costs in your state, but more than likely, you're going to have to see what your bank or your loan company offers. For example, Bank of America has a program that will help you with your down payment assistance as well as the closing costs. Um, Synovus has a similar program that does both. So it just requires um, some work on your part to find out exactly what programs out there that can possibly help you. Now, we all know my favorite program that I talk about all the time, which is the NACA program. Oh, you have a great day as well, babes. Which is, oh, that's my Power Ranger. You done changed your little icon. What's popping? Um, so you just gotta work right now. Luckily for you, I'm I've become y'all enabler, I'm working on it, and I generally tell you where you need to go find these things. Oh, this is your main account. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, baby. Somebody called me amazing. Um, so because I've become your enabler, I generally tell you where to go look for these things. One, Bank of America. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Um, I bet you have a lot of people who don't agree I'm adorable. Ho ho! When you sit on the other side of the table and you gotta negotiate with me, I ain't so cute then. Um, Thank you, I'm finishing up my makeup. I had to like, rush it today because it's little boy oh, moving on but um yeah so on my seminar i'm going to have on wednesday the link is in my bio to purchase tickets i am going to do a brain dump you'll know everything that i know or as much as i can try to give you in that time frame i'm also going to give you the documentation the websites the hyperlinks everything to get to where you need to be now there's only so much I can do as your enabler, okay? I can give you the information. I can point it out to you, but I can't make you do it. So, guess what I'm doing now? I am going to send you an additional document that you would have to enter into an agreement with me that you're going to do the work, right? I don't want you to promise me you're going to do anything. I want you to promise you you're going to do everything. Home ownership and getting your credit repair is very much so possible. And you can do this in, honestly, a short amount of time if you know what to do. So I'm going to teach you what to do. But it's going to be on you to actually do it. Yeah, isn't that something? So I've literally giving you every resource. You want a quick way to boost your credit? What did I do? There's a link in my bio that you can add your rent. You need help fixing your credit? 
what I do. There's a link in my bio to help you fix your credit. There's a link in my bio that tells you about the self program where you can build your credit. There's a link in my bio about a secure card that you can get that does not pull um, an inquiry to pull your credit score. I mean, I have the NACA program out there, the FHA program, USDA program, VA program. I mean, what you waiting for? Like, literally, tell me what you need from me so I can fix it. So, I'm going to sit here. I'm, well, first, I'm going to ask you to tap the screen. That notifies more people that I'm here. Because maybe somebody else has a suggestion or thought that you hadn't. But tell me what I can do, other than sitting at your coffee table, to help you get into your home. Like, for reals. Because maybe I'm missing a piece of the puzzle, and I want to be helpful. So, can y'all tap, tap, tap the screens for me, please? And thank you. Um, good morning, babes. How are you? Eve Townsend. So, tell me what I can do to help you to get to the next step in your home ownership journey. So, I'm like, actually waiting for you guys to answer me. Because I want to help you. But I need you to... Tell me what I need to do to help you. Like, tell me where is your area that you feel that you're falling short. So I can tell you how we can fix it. Like, this is my olive branch moment. Like, I want to help you. But in order to help you, I need you to tell me where you're having... Um, difficulty. Do I have a special letter to creditors to remove medical bills that are in collection? Yes, I do. And to get that letter, um, there is a link in my bio. Uh, I think it's called either DIY credit or, or is it DIY, a DIY credit or my credit literature where I have the letters that you can actually pay like between two to three dollars um some i think the packet for the medical letters because it's a packet of three in case you have to continually dispute it for like going through the series i want to say that's like ten dollars what do i need to do with being on disability you just need to make sure your credit score is there plenty of people buy a house um oh you got your ticket that's what's up thank you for your support um and hey you know your address is about to change, right? Like for for, yeah. Okay, so you're looking to purchase the first time you need help. What help do you need? Like I'm trying to get to the nitty gritty of this, but basically back to the medical question. I have a packet that you can purchase all of the letters. I want to say. I'm trying to remember what the link title is in my bio, but just click on all of them. It's it's out there. I think it's called my literature. Or something like that. Um, the things that I wrote and I crafted, it's out there. I have a house now, but I want to make a rental property and buy another house and use my primary residence. Cool. That's not hard. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Yes, we got to move on. You're just joining? Okay, so his queen. The question is, what do you need? Or what fill in the blank do you that you require to move to your next step of home ownership? That's my question. Because in order for me to help you, I need to know what your stumbling block is. So, so okay. So you have you have your primary property. You want to make it your own property. You want to purchase another residence. Cool. What you can do, Crystal, is you can or is it Crystal? Chris, kind of your name, kind of jump. Chris. Okay. What you can do is you can do. Um, you can get a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. You can take that money and you can use that money as your down payment on your next home. Or there's something that's called a bridge loan, right? What the bridge loan is, um, well, not the bridge loan, do a home equity line of credit. You can take the down payment, you can take the money for that and make that as your down payment on your second purchase, right? And your second purchase can be something like um, you can possibly qualify for FHA if you've currently outgrown the home that you're in. Like just yesterday, one of my 
um, she's a, now an investor. We were looking for property for her to move in so she can make her primary residence an Airbnb. So, and she was able to get an FHA loan, which is a 3.5%, right? And this, she's a second home time buyer. So you can use FHA to purchase more than once. But that's how I would suggest. That's what she did when we, that was our plan that we came up with. So the home that we put an offer in on yesterday, she's going to move to that home. And while she's in that home, she's going to fix, fix up her previous home to get it ready for air, to make it an Airbnb because of the areas in. And then the goal is once that's up and running to, and start generating some revenue, she's going to do it again. So she's basically doing the Burr method, but it's, She's still renting it, but she's renting it out as Airbnbs versus renting it out to one family or one particular person. Um, let me see. I rent now in one state, looking to buy a duplex and rent out. So I can do another state. I rent now in one state. Okay. So if you're currently renting, step one. I want you to go to the link in my bio for add my rent. What that's going to do, that's going to boost your credit score if you need credit score boosting. And if you, because you're trying to get another home. So that's going to be the first thing. Second thing, if you're, I think you're telling me that you want to move out of state, but I think you're saying when you move out of state, you want to purchase a multi property. I think that's what you're trying to tell me. And if that's what you're trying to tell me, that's very possible. So what you can do is, since you're renting now, that tells me that you don't currently own the property, or you may be a first-time home buyer. So this is how you're going to strike to make that, make sure that you get the bang for your buck. You're going to use a first-time home buyers program, like FHA, USDA, whatever, even NACA. Purchase where you want to be at. But instead of purchasing a duplex, I want you to see if you can find a quadplex. Because when you have a quadplex, you're living in the first unit basically for free. Then you run out the second and third unit, um, and that's going to pay for all four. And then the fourth unit is going to be extra income. So what I would suggest for you to do is that. Now, with the extra income from the fourth unit and the money that you're not paying out in your unit, um, Take at least half of what you would have been paying towards the mortgage out of your unit, what you know, for where you're living, plus the money from the fourth unit, and you would save that and use that to purchase another quadplex. I would always try to aim for a quad or a triplex, meaning three buildings together. Like if you were to purchase three townhouses, three condos, or something like that together, versus a duplex, because a duplex you're only hitting half of your potential income right? And you're still going to have some out-of-pocket expenses. The whole point is to allow this asset to cover all of your expenses. So you need to hit it harder, right? And to qualify for more money to purchase a quadplex versus a duplex, that means that your credit score needs to be higher and your debt-to-income ratio needs to be lower. So it looks like you have more money being able to go towards the purchase of the home. I hope that makes sense. Do I do one-on-one -on -one consultations? Of course I do, E. There's a link in my bio to schedule an appointment. Um, removing late payments from my credit report. Boom. Link in my bio for credit restoration. Okay, y'all. So I'm waiting for y'all to throw me a challenge that I haven't even already given you the answers for. Um, I tell y'all, my babies, everything that you need... Hi, user 94960492. My babies, everything that you need, I try to supply it to you. When I tell you I want you to win, I want you to win. I think the first name dropped off. How do I find out this? Contact your lender. Your makeup and hair are flawless. Thank you. I'm working on it right now. I still got to put on some blush and a little highlighter. My whole day got thrown off this morning with my son at school. Then I missed the delivery for my new wig, y'all. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. That's okay. So, do you think renters are more likely to pay if you're in a town, if you're in town or out of town? Um, It don't matter where you're located. I'm going to tell you why. If you're out of town and you're not, you need to get a property manager you show you show money because 
I'm working on it. I'm still, you know, it's progress. Um, but if you are out of town, then get a property manager. And let me tell you this. If you are in town and you're living in the fourplex, still get a property manager. Here's why. I know you don't want somebody knocking on your door in the middle of the night talking about the sink don't work or there's a leak. Get a property manager. Save yourself the headache. The people who live on your property don't even need to know you're the owner. Why do they need to know that? They don't need to know your business. All they need to know is they need to pay their rent. And if you, if in the event that you see someone doing something that they should not be doing on the property, notify your property manager. Save yourself the headache. Right? How uncomfortable would it be to live next to some next door to somebody that you about to evict? Child, save yourself the headache. Save yourself the headache. They know they was laying on their rent, so now y'all pull up at the same time. Looking, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> uncomfortable as hell. Save yourself. Hire a property manager. Trust me. Peace of mind is priceless. Now, you know a doggone well. Lakeisha's staying next door. And she ain't... Not she has not. She ain't paid your rent. But here she got a new wig that you know costs four five hundred dollars But she ain't paying you your rent. What if you put somebody else in the middle... I have a little snag right here, y'all. What's up with that? <sighs> so, I'm just saying. Hey. My podcast producer just joined in. Who they want? Hey, my baby. You're new here. What's the first step? First step is pulling your credit. Credit is always going to be step number one. Always. I don't care if you're going to purchase um, a car. Step number one, credit. You say you need help with it all. <laughs> what you mean? Just try it. You should have been able to. You just met me on here. I got right life. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Try to use your name for a secured credit card, but it doesn't work for New York. Okay, well then go to self, the link for self, S E L F, with this, and that's in my bio too. So with self, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna sign up for that. It's like a secured, it's a secured certificate deposit. You actually purchase a certificate deposit, right? And what's gonna happen is after you first paid about like a hundred dollars, they're gonna offer for you to turn it into a secured card. Boom. But while you're doing it as a certificate deposit, it's going to appear in your credit report as a loan. So after you, if you turn it into a secure card, well, you know how those work, right? You have much money you have on it, that's your limit. But if you leave it as a certificate deposit, as the time goes on and you're making payment, it looks like a long-term loan, right? What's, what's an average good score to get? It depends on what you want to do with that score, actually. Like a perfect score is 850. If you're wanting to at least get your foot in the door for home ownership, um, between 620 to 640. Hi, good morning, babes. Good morning, babes. All right, y'all. So don't forget the webinar is on Wednesday, right? If you are wanting to actually tax pro resolve now, second lane, say they are first. Tax pro resolve now, second lane, say they are first. So how do we get that one resolved? Latash McDonald, the most extraordinary real estate coach ever. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Um, is it best to get a home loan through the bank? A bank with or a different lender. It's best for you to shop around, right? You can check with your bank, but then check with two other people. Um, if you're gonna check with two other people, one of the two other people that I would like for you to check with is the Loan Depot and or Sonova's Bank, right? Um, 
And a third place is a movement mortgage. A fourth great rate. But you only need to check with three and do a price comparison. Because sometimes your bank, um, it's a bank, right? Just because you've had your money there for a thousand years doesn't mean that you have a relationship with them and they're going to actually show you any kind of favor to them. You may know Smith when you walk in the door. You may be knowing Jenny. Y'all probably went to high school together or whatever, but their rules are the rules, right? And they have to follow the rules. So it may behoove you to shop around, right? Why not? Somebody else might give you a better rate. Somebody might, might, somebody might give you um, a larger amount to purchase with. Different lenders have different criterias. Your credit is wrong, so uh, can you boost it up fastly? Add your rent. Link in my bio. If you go ahead and you add your rent to your credit bureau report, once it's updated and verified, which takes about two weeks to 30 days, you can see anywhere from a 40 to 100 point jump, depending upon how far back you are reporting your rent. You forgot I did coaching? Yes, baby, yes. Yes. Good morning, babes. Y'all be full of the comps. I mean, y'all be full of the compliments. Y'all gonna have me have a big head. Good morning, Belle. Belle and Dior. Good morning. You need a coach so bad? I need you as a student so bad. So let's work on our relationship. It doesn't matter if the runner is a private owner. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to put that information and you're going to reach out. They're going to reach out to them for you to actually put the information on your credit bear report. What's up, Boji? We around here keeping our heels high and our pink is in the air. How can we do that again? Add your rent. There's a link in my bio that's called Add Your Rent. So you're going to click on my bio. It's going to say Link Tree. Once you hit Link Tree, it'll be one of the options. Same way, sweetheart. Is it Big Neek? It's not Big Neek. Um, I just wanted to say it like that. It seemed like it would be fun. And it was. Anyway, you're going to click the link in my bio. It's going to, you're going to click on my name, Link Tree, and you'll see schedule an appointment. What's up, people? What's up, fam? What'd I do? Hi, Holmes with Carla. I just realized I couldn't see like, okay, y'all names appear white. And by me having on like this white shirt, that's why I got to lean in to kind of see who I'm talking to. So. And to If someone have a checking account and they want to buy a house, do they have to have a savings account too? No, they don't have to have a savings account. Mm -mm. But they're going to ask you for your banking information, right? You don't have to. So, okay. If y'all think of like... Anything that, you know, maybe a stumbling block for you that I may not have addressed. First of all, go to YouTube, look at my previous lives. The answer is probably there, number one. Number two, if you can't find the answer there, which is a free video library, um, text me. Can I put password? You can go back as far as... I want to say either two or three years. I feel like two or three years. But only add it if you're paying it on time. Like, don't go out there and stuff and you ain't paid on time. How do I get approved just now starting a daycare? How do you get approved for a home um, or to purchase commercial property? You know what? Let me answer both. 
If you want to purchase a home and you want to purchase it through your business, then you need to start establishing your business credit. You're going to need to have at least two years of your taxes. Um, and if you're self-employed, you're still going to need two years of your taxes. It doesn't matter if you're self-employed or if you're working for somebody else. So that's answer number one. Number two, if you are thinking about it, oh yeah, thank you, I'm sorry. I went straight into the answer and did not say congratulations. That was very rude of me. I apologize. So let me fix that. Congratulations. Sorry, I was in thought mode. I apologize. That's a hell of an accomplishment. And thank you for getting me together, Kendra, because I was gone in the zone. Appreciate my family. Thank you. Um, I was tripping. My bad. I just was rambling. Um, but if you know me by now, you know that I had no ill intent. None at all. But that's what's up, boo. Girl, I'm not bad kicking ass. Kicking ass, taking names. And trust me, the world needs uh, daycares because, yeah. <sighs> I learned how hard it was to teach because of the pandemic and having my crumb snatch at home. But anywho, so now if you want to do it through commercial. So when I say commercial, I mean like, you know, building and stuff like that. No, 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 no. I didn't mean getting me together in a bad way. I mean, bring it to my attention. Right? We family. Hey, Diva. We're family. So you were bringing it to my attention. That's what I mean. Like, I was all over the place and you, your comment brought me here. 5K, um, personally asked a question about the commercial. So when a commercial property is different from purchasing residential, the commercial will be based upon the revenue in which the pers- the, the property is going to make generate for you. Um, so it's different, but you're still going to need your tax information. I got hand my tongue. Now, as far as you appreciate you taking your time to share the information with us. Oh, nice time, baby. Um, we're talking about the topic of the discussion is where is your stumbling block for home ownership so I can help you get over that stumbling block? So tell me what your stumbling block is and I'll tell you a solution or at least try to tell you a solution. So yeah, commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is different um, than residential and how things are figured out. Um, But the question I skipped was, is 5K enough? Let's do the math. Just figuratively, because my calculator's over there. So, tell me how much you want to purchase. Okay, on second thought, let's do this. 250K. If you want to purchase a house for 250K, your escrow amount is going to be 1%. So, that 1%, which is your escrow, which is your good faith deposit, that's at least 2500 right there, right? So, that's that 1%. If you get down payment assistance, which you should... If you get down payment assistance, you're going to take that $250,000 multiplied times 3.5%. That tells you how much you need for your down payment, which pretty much is going to mirror for your closing costs, right? So if you get down payment assistance, that's going to cover that. Great. Let's say um, now you have to consider things like your inspections. That can be anywhere from $100 to $300. If you're paying for the survey, if it was negotiated for you to pay the survey as the buyer, that could be anywhere from five to six hundred dollars. Um, you may have some other miscellaneous fees, so right there, your five k is already absorbed, and you still haven't gotten to your closing costs. Now, if you do something like um, a program that Sonovas has, which is called AMP. Your credit score, minimum score has to be a 633. And I think your debt to income ratio has to be about 30% or below. Um, That's going to cover your down payment and your closing costs. So then you don't only have to worry about your escrow amount, your inspections, surveys. Um, If you do something like the NACA program, which is zero down payment, zero closing costs, zero fees. Well, that tells you how much you need there, right? You're just going to need your inspections and survey money. I hope that answers your question. Um, no, they're not on button. Okay. How good is FHA? It's amazing. Um. 
So fear. Now, fear. I can understand fear. Can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all tap on the screen? And we'll discuss this fear. I can get behind fear. And I have a lot of respect for that honest answer. So let's talk about fear. Okay. We're human beings. Naturally moving into the unknown is very frightening. Because when you're going through the unknown, you're pretty much going through a darkness. Unsurety. Confusion. And you're pretty much scared shitless because you don't know what the end is. And it's a major financial risk. It's major, right? And it's a major financial responsibility. It is like... Dun, dun, dun. But on the other hand, what if you make it? A bird would never want to fly unless it jumps. It has to jump. You never know how high you can soar unless you jump. Sorry, my nephew called. I lost connection. Here's a little tidbit about me. For a long time, I mean a long time. I don't want to tell you how many years, but we'll just say over 20. I worked for someone else. I've always been blessed to be able to excel at my jobs because... Failure is never an option for me. But I have fear of jumping on my own. Right? There's nothing like a security of getting a paycheck from someone else that you know that you can depend on versus not knowing if you're going to get a check. Even though you know you're going to put in that work. But still, not knowing if you're going to get that check. Since I decided to jump, you know, I make more money now. And I promise you, let me tell you this. Here's going to be the kicker. Most of my money does not come from real estate. It does not. It does not. How about that? Most of the money that I make comes from what I call sleep money. I had to learn how to invest the money that I had and make the money that I had work for me because money is a tool. Most of the money that I get come in come from things that I've invested in. Um... Not really from selling houses. I mean, I make money from selling houses, but that's not where the majority of my revenue come from. But had I not jumped and take the risk on myself, then I'd still be chained to somebody else to control my future. So, you have to jump. You won't crash. I won't let you. You won't crash. You got to jump. Hey, Elise. How are you, Elise? You got to jump. You got to jump. Now, let me tell y'all. Please don't say, oh, but it's different because you have a husband. Say what now? What's the name? I love my husband. He loves me. But I depend on no man. 
no woman, or no man. The last people I depended on was my parents. I depend on no man. My husband would love it if I depended on him. He would love it. He would love it. He would love it. He would adore. He would ad Do you know how far his chest would be out if he had a little old wife who depended on him? Child boo. My internet's messing up. It's telling me it's good on my end. Y'all. But you're a man. If you're a man, you know. <laughs> y'all like for y'all women to come to y'all. Just be a damsel in distress. So y'all can save her. Knowing that she needs me. All I need is Jesus. I don't get it twisted. I love my husband. Wouldn't train for nothing in the world. Biggest cheerleader in pain. However, depend. Nah, boo. Nah. What's the good and the bad about NACA? Okay, the good. Zero down payment, zero closing costs, not based upon any credit. The bad. You. Let me explain. The NACA program is based upon you and your ability to show that you can pay your bills on time and that you can save money. So, the longer it takes for you to prove that, that's as long as the program is going to take. So, the problem, you. It's not based upon your credit score. It's based upon your character. So they are going to pull your credit bill report and they're going to look to see how you've made your payments. And the logic is, boom, if you haven't paid them, why would I think you'll pay me back for this loan? So if you show them that you're going to pay them other people, then they'll feel comfortable about, you know, go ahead and approving you. So you join the program and you have some late payments, you have some charge-offs, and you're like, damn, how do I get this taken care of? Link in my bio for credit restoration. The good, you get a whole bunch of shit for free. You end up with a house with a whole bunch of money still in your pocket. The bad, you. Sorry. One of those truth hurt moments. All right, y'all. So I am about to go. Yeah, you gotta have patience. This little part right here.